When you're learning clutch control, go somewhere quiet. The quieter, the better. If there's plenty of space, that helps too, but no hills. You wanna learn clutch control on the flat before you learn it on a hill. If you master it on the flat first, when you go to a hill, it will make more sense and it's more likely to be successful, so you're less likely to get that unhealthy fear of hills that many new drivers have when driving a manual car. Now it's time to learn the bite point of the clutch, also known as half clutch. And no surprise, it's about halfway up. If you're in gear and you lift the clutch up, when you get to about halfway, it can be higher, it can be lower, but it's usually around about halfway, the car will start to move. Then you've got to hold your foot there for a moment. When you're practicing this, have your supervisor looking out for traffic because when you're trying to focus on learning something you want to focus on that if you're trying to worry about traffic as well that's going to take your mind off of what you're trying to get good at and therefore it's going to take you longer to get good at it this is why you want to be somewhere very quiet and your supervisor can look out for traffic and tell you to stop if someone's coming once you have found a suitable location and your supervisor is looking out for hazards ready to tell you to stop Get the clutch down and select first gear. First gear is all the way left and forwards in just about all cars these days. Then take the parking brake off. This is a ratchet style parking brake, but you can get an electronic button. The car should not roll because you should not be on a hill. If you're on a hill, then you need to find somewhere else to practice this. Then set the gas. You want the revs to be between 1000 and 2000 RPM. If you don't have a rev counter or a tachometer, whatever you want to call this, then just try and get a nice gentle sound, something like this. Don't know if that comes across on camera, but it shouldn't be too loud. If the revs are gradually rising slowly or falling a tiny bit like they have been now, don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. Now, lift the clutch slowly, and when the car starts to move, hold the clutch steady. You only want it to move slowly, and hold the clutch for a couple of seconds, then clutch down and brake. Then repeat the process. So set some gas, lift the clutch slowly until the car starts to move, hold it steady when it's moving slowly for a couple of seconds and then clutch down and brake to stop. And keep repeating this process until you move smoothly. The car should not be jerking forwards and you shouldn't take too long finding the bite point. You should be able to find the bite point about this fast after setting the gas. So I'll do that again, about this fast. If you can do it that fast, without jerking the car, then you've mastered finding the bite point in that particular car. This exercise is great for building up muscle memory of where the bite point is because you're doing it again and again and again and you're focusing on it so you learn it quickly. It's important that your supervisor knows what to look out for. They should be looking in front, behind and the relevant blind spots and when a hazard gets close enough that it's a concern then they should tell you to stop. You don't need to wait for someone who's half a mile down the road because well they're not a concern at the moment. When they get close enough that you think you may be confusing them stop, let them pass and then carry on. When trying to practice the clutch bite point, it can be helpful to keep your heel off the floor. Here's why. If I push the clutch up and down now with my heel off the floor, the clutch pedal, if I move it to one side, you better see, the clutch pedal stays in the same place under my foot. But if I put my heel down and lift the clutch, you'll see the clutch pedal slides under my foot. And when I push it back down again, now it's in a different position. I lift it up, push it down again. And by the time I've done it two or three times, I've actually lost control off this pedal and I don't have any option other to try and wiggle my foot lower or come off the clutch completely. Many people are taught to keep their heel down when using the clutch. And in fact, I've seen many people struggle finding the bite point because they're trying to keep their heel down. It works for some people, but it doesn't work for everyone. Do what works for you. Once you've mastered finding the bite point, the next step is to know when to come off the clutch fully. Do it too early, it's gonna be jerky. Do it too late, you don't have as much control over the car. It's quite easy to tell. Normally the engine speed starts increasing once the clutch is finished, and quite often just before it increases, it goes down a little bit as well, but not always. So quite often the sound will go like, like that, then you know you can come off the clutch. I'll try and demonstrate that now. So clutch down first gear, parking brake off, get some gas, find the bite point, no one's coming, hold the clutch steady, usually takes about four seconds, listen to the revs, you see they've dropped, 
and then they've started going up again and I can come off the clutch. You may not have been able to hear the revs because I was talking, so I'll do that again. But you could probably see they dropped and then went back up again. So clutch down, braking to a stop, get some gas again, and this time I'll be quiet. Like so. If you feel the car is accelerating a bit too slowly, lift the clutch up a tiny bit more. So I'll stop again, and I'll get some gas, I'll get a tiny amount of bite point, very low bite point, so it's moving very slowly, and I think, oh, this is taking a long time. So it's a little bit higher, and hold it a bit higher, and you see it accelerates a bit quicker, and then when the revs start building like they are now, you can come fully off the clutch. If you heard the parking sensors go off there, that's because there's quite long grass hanging out from the side here, and every so often, it sets it off. They haven't cut this like they usually do. In fact, the whole of the UK at the moment seems to be very bushy on the roads. I think they've been told not to cut the verges so that the bees have more pollen, I guess, or nectar is what they want, isn't it? You may have noticed that the revs drop when I lift the clutch up. That doesn't mean the clutch is done. They will always drop the moment you reach the bite point because they're under pressure. They're trying to move this heavy car. It's no different to you holding your hands out and someone putting a heavy box on you, you're gonna go down. That's the same thing that's happening to the car. I'll show you now. So clutch down, first gear, handbrake off. I'll give some revs, some power there. So the engine has some power to move the car no one coming. As I lift the clutch, the revs are under pressure. They start moving the car. Sometimes they drop a little bit more before they rise, just as the clutch finishes. The next step is to learn how to stay slow. Usually I'll pick out an object at the side of the road, say a lamppost or something, but there's nothing really distinctive here. So I'm gonna put an arrow on screen now. And I'll say to my pupil, You've got to get from here to that point without going above two miles per hour. And usually I'll do the steering and keep them near the side of the road so they can just focus on speed. And nearly every time this happens, they usually think it's gonna be quite easy. They think two miles an hour, how hard can that be? Okay, so they get gas, they get the bike point. By now they're checking themselves to make sure it's safe and blind spot, make sure it's clear. Bike point, there it is. Okay, one, two, oh, three. Oh, off gas. Oh, it's still going faster. I'm off the gas though. Five. Oh, what's happened here? And that's because when you lift the clutch to the bike point, the car wants to accelerate. It doesn't want to stay at the same speed. And in first gear, it will reach four to five miles an hour, depending on the car, without gas. With gas, it's going to go even more. Their reaction is, oh, it's going too fast. Let's come off the gas, but that's not going to slow you down below the minimum speed first gear can handle when the clutch has finished. And the clutch has finished. They may not be off it, but it has finished. It has synced up the clutch and the engine. They're doing the same speed. So what you have to do is you have to give the car a series of nudges. By lifting the clutch to the bite point, the car accelerates, then clutch down and let it roll. When the car starts to go a bit too slow, lift it up, give the car a little push again, then clutch down and let it roll. This is how you keep a manual car slow. This is how you park when you're trying to park and you're really slow in a tight space. So I'll show you that now. No one's coming, bit of gas, bit of bite point. That's one mile an hour, clutch down so I don't go any faster and I'll wait. And I'll only give it another push when I need to. This is ever so slightly downhill so it's taking ages to slow down it's still doing two miles an hour even though the clutch is down there's one so I'll, I'll let it go a little bit longer actually i'll give it a little push now bit of bite point there we go another little push then clutch down back up to two and that's all you have to do if you're slightly uphill you're going to have to give more pushes if you're downhill like we are now you won't have to give many pushes if it starts going downhill even more you may even have to use the brake to keep yourself slow it's starting to flatten out now there's a car coming up behind so i will just indicate left and stay near left now to let them pass and i'll stop but hopefully that illustrates what you need to do to stay slow I'm now gonna demonstrate going slow uphill. This is a tiny bit uphill, and you'll notice I'll have to lift the clutch up many more times because it's gonna slow down more quickly. Lifting the clutch up pushes the car forwards or nudges the car forwards. So if I say give the car a nudge, that's really what I mean. Lift the clutch up, find the bite point, that nudges the car, then clutch down, then it continues to roll and it will slow down based on the hill that you're on. So clutch down, first gear, handbrake off, 
tiny bit uphill, but not enough to actually make myself roll here. Bit of gas, no one's coming. Bit of bite point, little nudge there. One mile an hour, two mile an hour, clutch down, let it roll. Slightly uphill, so it's slowing down more quickly. So you see, I have to give it another nudge now by lifting the clutch. And I'm gonna have to do that more often than I was before, because now I've just basically turned round and now I'm going up the same hill instead of down. So I have to give loads of little nudges. Now, what can happen is when you get skilled at this, your nudges can be so fine, the resolution can be so high, like I am now, that it looks like you're not actually speeding up or slowing down, you're staying at the same speed, but that's because you're just doing lots of tiny little nudges, so the car is only slowing down and speeding up a tiny amount, so it's barely perceivable. This is where keeping your heel up can be very important, because if you happen to lift your foot up and push your foot down on the clutch a lot, you probably will lose your footing. In vans though, the pedals are a bit different, so I find in vans it's not such a problem because they sort of come out of the front more horizontally, but with vertical pedals like these ones, when I have my heel down, you see I'm gonna start, the pedal's gonna start getting lower and lower, and eventually I'm gonna get a little bit stuck and have to do that wiggle, and I actually shot forward a tiny bit there when I wiggled, didn't wanna do that, I wasn't in control. So yeah, heel up. Like that, for me, I find that a lot easier, and so don't many of my pupils. What about clutch wear, I hear you ask? Well, if you're learning to use the clutch, you're going to cause more wear because you're using it for the sake of practice. It's getting more use. An experienced driver is only gonna use that clutch as and when they need to. What you don't need to be worried about is holding the clutch at the bite point for a few seconds to let the wheels gradually catch up with the engine so you move away smoothly without sending a nasty jolt through the car, possibly causing more harmful damage to your transmission. This is not riding the clutch. This is using the clutch and it's exactly what it's designed to do. I have a video all about riding the clutch though. I'll leave a link to it up there in the top right hand corner of your screen. You may have been told or have just realized that you can lift the clutch up without adding gas and your car will move away just fine. And it will in this car. Let me show you, clutch down first gear, handbrake off, no one coming. I'll lift the clutch up, but pay attention to the revs when I do this. I'm not adding gas and the car moves. It is moving, it's moving slowly, but it moves. Did you see the revs though? I'll do it again, watch the revs. Even though I'm not pressing the gas, the revs rise anyway. And that's because you do need a bit of power to get the car moving. And even though I'm not giving gas, the car's computer, which is known as the ECU, the electronic control unit, knows gas is needed, so it's adding power for you to prevent you from stalling. I don't recommend learning this way, although I use it myself sometimes. I don't recommend learning it this way because if that's the only method you use, when you get to a car that doesn't give you much help, well, you're gonna struggle moving without stalling. And that does actually happen to many people who pass their driving test in the car that gives them lots of help and they don't need to add gas. And when they go to move away themselves, this happens. I got going, but it was a little bit jumpy and I think I scared the scribble there. So my advice is to practice adding gas before you lift the clutch. That way you'll learn the skill you need to drive all manual cars. But not only that, it will help you accelerate more quickly, which can help you in certain situations, can give you more confidence. If you think the video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for car insurance, check out the links to Collingwood and Confused in the description. Collingwood are great if you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy, which takes away a big stress from the owner. Via the link, there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car, check out the link to confuse.com. You fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back so you can compare who's cheapest. But also, you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like so that you can compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.